Hello, in this uh, AWS Cloud Practitioner, I'm demonstrating this Modulate uh, that is Lab 5. So the content in this Lab 5 is a build a database server and interact with your DB using an app. So I already started the lab. So now I just to select this AWS to get into this uh, console, the AWS management console. So before I go into this lab, I just want to explain the scenario what we need to do, the objective. So here we are going to launch an Amazon RDS DB instance with high availability. That is the first task. The next task is that configure the DB instance to permit connections from your web server. And of course, the last one is open a web application to interact with your database. Okay, so yeah, this is the scenario which is there. You have your VPC also, and then public subnet one, public subnet two, private subnet one, and private subnet two. You have inbuilt security group also, that is web server security group, and also an activity. Yeah, so let us start. And finally, we need to create, uh, I mean, RDS instance. Uh, which should uh, yeah RDDB master and RDDB second second as well in your private subnet and also we need we have a web server so we need to interact with the web server to uh, your RDS server yeah so the first task is that go into the web uh, main management console two security groups especially in the VPC so let me go into the VPC it's not there just say vpc and press vpc yeah so create a security group here you can see the security groups so create a security group we have already a security one security group you can see here so please inspect this one uh, the we have security groups choose the uh, create security group and also we are trying to create another security group which is db security group. right so i create a security group security group name is db security group and the description i can give as permit uh, access from web security group i already have this lab vpc i need to select that so just click to this one and select lab VPC. So lab VPC. Scroll down and just verify what the rules you need to provide. Add a rule which should permit 3306 Aurora MySQL Aurora. So I add this rule. This is MySQL Aurora source is anywhere yeah you can see the source oh, yeah we need to select sg and web security group you need to allow it to uh, web security group uh, just say custom and say sg web security group. select that so this security group should be permission yeah and then this task one is complete so outbound rules is all with yes we will be using the security group in our task so task 2 we need to create a db subnet group okay go to rds go to rds the services uh, you can either go through this database rds or you can put it in the search bar for RDS so we first is that before creating RDS database we are going to create a subnet group so this is DB subnet group right here this is subnet group we don't have any DB instances as of now create a DB subnet group name it as DB subnet group and here description is also same db subnet group choose this lab vpc choose this lab vpc just scroll down subnets you need to select your availability zones 
I mean one A and one B. Two minimum two we are selecting because we need to deploy multi availability zone. So I'm selecting two availability zones. Any of these two, just availability zones. In subnet one A and one B, you see this. Just select this CADR range one dot zero and three dot zero. See this one dot zero. This is one and the three dot zero. This is second. One A and one B. Yeah. And once the subnet is selected, you can choose create. Yeah. Create. Yes. We have created the DB subnet group. Now our next task, our next task is to create the RDS. That is task number three. So create the dot, uh, database. So here we are going to uh, select a database uh, which is uh, with the following parameters. Yeah, uh, creation group. Like I'll go to this database. Choose database. So here uh, I can create a database. If you see switch from new database flow, choose it. So select I am going to create MySQL. So I can say create database. Some of the options, please be careful, we need to follow as per the guidelines given. loading uh, all various parameters standard create choose mysql so the database out of all the six we are selecting this mysql okay uh, yeah L use the same version which is there uh, we don't really require any major change and of course so uh, what we need is uh, uh, so db name and all these things are given See, this is burstable classes t3 micro we need to select so just select development and test don't select production okay you can select this one this is multi agent or single agent so here just understand multi agent deployments provide enhanced capabilities so and so when you provide a multi agent DB instance, Amazon RDS create primary DB and synchronously replaces with DB to stand okay in a different availability zone. So you will configure to launch multi agent on MySQL. So you can select multi agent DB instance here. Yeah. Alright, scroll down. You can see this DB identifier. So just note the DB identifier is lab DB. And master username is main. So just provide the things which are supposed to be. This replace from admin to main. And of course, the next is your password. So please confirm your password. I think it should be lab hyphen PSSWRD password. Yeah. Just leave. Please confirm. Yes. In instance, select burstable classes. This is uh, we need to be very particular. So he asked to P3 micro, third generation micro. Yeah, it is already selected. So store is you need to I think modify. Store is you need to select general purpose SSD 20 GB only. General but not provision. General purpose SSD with 20 GB, not 200 GB also. GP2. Ensure that you are in GP2. Store is type is general purpose SSD. 20 MB general purpose SSD 20 GB not 20 MB 20 GB okay see there are some parameters uh, 
enable auto scaling so he didn't mention anything leave it so now you need to see the connectivity lab vpc under connectivity this is networking you need to select your lab vpc yeah and automatically you can see this db subnet group has already achieved yeah. and you see scroll down db subnet group okay. in additional configuration choose this lab database name is lab so rest of the other things you see this one public access no we don't require and uh, security groups vpc security groups so we just select this security groups this will be the security group and deselect the default one so i'm deselecting default and db security group yes i have selected you should see that and click down so rest all things leave it additional configuration port is 3306 password authentication so yeah monitoring uh, you can disable this one enhanced monitoring don't click additional configuration your initial database name is lab so this is what is really required and uncheck this automated backups Un uncheck enable encryption and monitoring all these three should be unchecked database name is now lab So we already unchecked this monitoring so uncheck this automated backups and one more uncheck is required uncheck this encryption see this one uncheck 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 and once all these things are okay just start creating the database version upgrades you can leave it as it is so this is costing approximately 29.42 dollars just say create database so it should take about three to four minutes to get your database ready so in during your case if you see that not authorized or something make sure you have checked unchecked all these things so it will take approximately four minutes to see that the database is available so once this is done once this is done you can see this one you, this is your lab database so this is completely this is under now creating the status is now creating you can just wait for a few minutes to get it ready see this one connectivity and security once this is ready you should get an endpoint you should get an endpoint so currently uh, the status is under creation okay meanwhile we'll explore the next task so interact with your database so to copy your web server IP, uh, choose the database, uh, choose the details of the web server IP. Uh, what you do is, I'll just duplicate this session, and I'll open here. I mean, the services uh, related to EC2. Otherwise, I can just say uh, EC2 here. Yeah. Meanwhile, at the endpoint, get ready. It will take approximately three to four minutes. So here you see the instance, yeah, web server instance which is there. You just copy this public IP. This is your public IP. Okay, and uh, open a new browser tab. That is point number thirty-three. yeah you can see this uh, website web server so rds so here this is an area where you can connect your rds so the database name username password once you get your endpoint you can uh, connect to that so let me wait till i get the endpoint till that time i will post all the other things see the main lab password and all these things i can destroy it here database name is lab username is main password is lab hyphen p a s s w o r d okay just i wait for the endpoint so once this is ready 
you should see the endpoint. So let me check the database status. That is still creation. Let me try to refresh. That is still under creation. Yes, the status has changed to modifying. So very soon you should have this uh, database uh, ready. Yeah. So it is created. It is trying to modify some of the things. You can very well see this uh, endpoint. So once you click the database name, you can see this endpoint. So this is on port number 3306. Okay. So I paste it to endpoint here. Okay. So you see the instructions. Once you submit, once you submit, you should see a message will appear uh, about the address book. After a few seconds, you will see the address book appear. If the address book is appeared, from your website, the database which you have created, I mean the lab database or whatever it is, uh, is ready. I mean it has connected to the uh, database RDS instance. Let me just go through whether it has co completed or not the status. So it's still creation, creation of the database. Modifying. Once it is done, you should see available. So we are almost at the verge of completion. And you know, let me try, let me try. So it is not, it's not yet ready. Just wait some more time till it is ready. Normally it takes more time, especially when you are deploying in multi-availability zone because it is also creating a replica from the master database server. Try to refresh till you see the status available. So after a period of about 10 to 12 minutes of time, I could see my database is available. Okay, So once this database is available, uh, you can see the endpoint it should be more or less the same uh, you can click this lab db you should see an endpoint so just copy this endpoint this lab db something like this it looks like this okay and copy paste earlier we did that but let me see if there is a change no change i think looks exactly the same yeah and say submit Yeah, so once you say submit, you should see address book containing records. That means that it has connected to your RDS database from your web server, from your web server. So if you get uh, a couple of records like this, then your exercise is uh, well done, well done. Okay, so that's what is the uh, answer. You can see the data is persisted uh, like the address book applications to store the information yes so this completes our lab congratulations you have completed okay once you have completed the lab what you can do is this you can uh, just say end lab so this will terminate all the uh, things which has been created so let us meet again in lab 6. Thank you everyone and bye.